Chuck, we're back. Yes. I got a good one. Got a good really? one. Really? Yeah. Constellation names. We haven't ever talked about that. We have never talked about mm, constellation never. names. Never. And, and I, we need some explaining there. I just, they need some explaining. Uh, there's like freaking 30 of them. Uh, well, no, no, no. Let's fix this. Nip it in the bud. Okay. There's more than 30 constellations. Oh, I'm sure there are. I was just, you know, there's, I don't even know. I, how much, wait, would you pull 30 out of your ass? Or, no, what? I was just, I was, <laughs> no. You know how you just make a, you make a, uh, uh, you just pull a number. Like, you know, I don't know how many constellations there are. Okay, I'll I tell you and you'll never forget. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Um, how many keys are on a piano? 88. That's how many constellations there are. Oh, wow, cool. Now you'll never forget. Now you'll never forget. There are 88 constellations. Exactly. Right? And the My 88... favorite, though, is Hercules. Hercules. I'll get to him in a minute. Hercules, so... Hercules. Hercules. <laughs> That's all I really wanted to do. Hercules is not my favorite constellation. I just wanted to go, Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Somebody watches sorry. too many movies. I do. I, don't know. I yeah, do. Yeah. I do. So <clears throat> the thing is the 88 keys on a piano make music. 88 constellations make a zoo, a complete crazy zoo, okay. a zoo, All okay? Right. And there are 88 of them. So uh, let me start out with the most famous 12. Go ahead. Which, are the, would, which would they would be? Would they be? Let me just, let me, <laughs> let me just take a stab at this. Okay. Try, try, try this, Chuck. There's 12 of them? Oh, my God. Like, would one of them be able to date me? Because... <laughs> Like, what are those constellations? Like, totally match up with my personality. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. So, um, yeah, so there's the 12 of the Zodiac. Right. And the first three letters of the word Zodiac spell what? Zoo. Zoo. So, zoo, it's it's a panoply of animals, creatures, uh, people, this sort of thing. Okay. And there's 12 of them. And so, it's, what I like is that the sky has constellations that are of things that are not even real, right? There's like Sagittarius is like, is a centaur, right? And, you know, Sagittarius is half man, half, half, half horse. horse. Right, yeah. right. And just to clarify, it's the front half that's the man and the right. back end that's the horse. If that were reversed, that would be kind of weird, right? Yeah, that'd be Bojack Horseman. <laughs> It yeah. would be Bojack Horseman. <laughs> like the front half is the horse, and he's got a human butt. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have a cameo in Bojack Horseman. Get out. I, I'm totally, totally serious. How it, did it, I not know this? How did you not know that? Uh, season one or two, something like that. I, Get it's, out. A, it's, a, it's a cameo. Yeah, it's a fast cameo. That's all. That's very cool, man. <clears throat> so, uh, but yeah, there are no half front horses. And, and so we, have, we do have other ones where humans are the rear end and the animal is the front end but they're not a constellation like the minotaur minotaur yeah yeah that's a bull the, head the, the bull head a human body and a human buttocks right right um exactly. so so however so the, there are many humans that are indeed a horse's ass <laughs> that's different <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying just saying. I'm you just, just saying. You're just not passing judgment. That, that, you're just stating just the facts. Just putting fact. it out there, people. Just putting it out there. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> all right. So, uh, so some are mythical, magical creatures. We have a flying horse, which is what? Pegasus. Pegasus is up there. And so it's fun to just see where and when these constellations started and what legends, what cultures, what mythologies put them on the sky and it's not the same around the world okay if you go to australia the aborigines who've been in australia longer than anybody else have been anywhere practically they have their own legends and their own things they say is up there in the sky like there's the constellation didgeridoo <laughs> that famous aboriginal constellation <laughs> and that other constellation boomerang <laughs> No, boomerang major, boomerang minor. minor. <laughs> Got the big go. and the little boomerang. Right, right. Not to mention, instead of canis major and minor, you have dingo major and minor. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the thing is, the constellations tend to emanate from people's cultures. What's especially interesting in Australia is that the Milky Way, which is in full view most of the year at night, there are parts of the Milky Way that are dark. And astrophysically, we thought there, that was the absence of stars. So we thought that these were gaps 
in where the stars were in the Milky Way, we would later learn that they're simply dark gas clouds obscuring the view behind it. So we in the West tend to give meaning to where we see light. Whereas in Australia, they saw those dark areas and they gave meaning to the dark areas. So in fact, one of the more famous of the dark constellations, if we may call it that, is what's called dark emu. Okay. A, it, it, emu is, is, you know, one of the creatures unique to right. uh, to to Australia. It's, it's also a uh, a very popular insurance salesperson here in America. Emu. Oh, emu. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I forgot that was an yeah. emu. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> so emus. I, I stood up close to one one time. It looks prehistoric. I mean, you look at the. It's got these three things for its two feet. And all I could think of was like T Rex's. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's really creepy, his, prehistoric looking, but it's living with us in modern times. Anyhow, so depending on where you are in the world, they have different constellations and different cultures and the like. That's I just want to make put that up up front. What we know in the West is what the West has written about constellations, and that's what I'll spend most of this the, the rest of the few minutes on. So so what do we have? Uh, we have sleepless. Possibly drug-induced <laughs> Greeks and Romans <laughs> and Babylonians looking up into the night sky. Right. Okay, right. I don't know what they were smoking. I don't know. Right. But to see four stars in the night sky, there's like a triangle and then another star that's above it. To look at that and say, "Yes, I see a crab with two claws," that takes extreme imagination. Mm -hmm. Or drugs. Right? Dr <laughs> you know, back then they called it pharmakia. That's what the Greeks called it because they were getting high. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so that, that's just an, an example of what the foundation was for people then dreaming this stuff up. And so most of the constellations that we see in the Northern Hemisphere were seen by the Greeks and the Romans and, and earlier before them, the Babylonians. And, and so they thought about it and they put up their legends. Okay. So we have Perseus and Andromeda and, 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 and Pegasus. And there's even Medusa, not a constellation, but Medusa's bloody severed head is being held by Perseus in the sky after it has been cut off. Why, why did he cut off Medusa's head? To, uh, to turn the Kraken into stone. Yes, to turn the, so that he could save. Uh, what's her face? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> To save what's her face? To save what's her face <laughs> from the Kraken, right. and and uh, Pegasus was made from sea foam, and it's a flying horse, not anatomically correct flying horse, because in the real world, you any mammal that flies, it forfeits its front limbs to be wings to do so. That makes sense. And bats, of course, gave that up right. in in um, Game of Thrones. The uh, the dragon is a reptile, not a mammal, but it's a vertebrate. And so to, if you're a vertebrate, you got to give up your forelimbs. That dragon gave up its forelimbs right. for wings. It didn't. It wasn't four legs and then wings on top of it. Absolutely. All right? And you know who else did it right? Was in the 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 smog smog. It's not oh, smog. Oh, Legend of Smog. <laughs> yes. Smog uh, for, from uh, um, the Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Yes. Series. That dragon, as portrayed in the film, uh, its forelimbs. Were it was the voice of 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 whose voice was that? Sean Connery. I no, <laughs> it might as well have been. It wasn't Sean Connery. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was. Um, Listen here, Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> it was Benedict Cumberbatch. That, that yes, best voice ever for a dragon. Uh, okay, he's amazing. Yes. So there it was, sort of inching along on its elbows, basically. Right. Or Which, it's, it's four and limbs. It's so, I never thought of, I did not know this fact that you're putting out now, but you're right. People who do it correctly, they should, like the wings become the, you know, the, 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 the front walking limbs. Right, exactly. Yeah, correct. And all birds don't have front legs, right? They right. don't have, they just have their two legs and their two wings. So, so that's just how that goes. Wow. So Pegasus in the sky is not anatomically correct. That's all I'm saying. Right. Okay. However, For, are we really not going to suspend disbelief for a flying horse? <laughs> Correct. So I'm not going to blame anybody for giving Pegasus four legs plus wings. 
All right, they want them that way, fine. But but what else is in the sky? Um, there's a unicorn, right? There's, uh, you know, what it's, called? it's called Monoceros. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mono. And, oh, yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah. So so we have a unicorn. We have a flying horse. Oh, by the way, again, from the northern hemisphere, the horse is upside down and there's only half drawn because you don't have enough stars to fill them out, the rest of them. So it's an upside down half white horse. Mm-hmm. This is the cost of dealing with the stars you're dealt yes. with. Okay. Bet, it's just, better, it, better known as glue. <laughs> This is just, it's a pastiche. Of what's <laughs> and I would say there's five out of the 88 that look like what they're supposed to look like. And I'll give this my top list here. So Orion, the hunter, good to go. Maybe I'll give you Hercules, but Orion is a way better strong man in the sky than is Hercules. Uh, Leo, there's some stars that look like the... The, the, the main the main and the head and a body that comes backwards I'll give you Leo okay. so what are we up to three okay All right. Two I got more. one for you you ready go ahead um, <laughs> there's a constellation called Triangulum okay guess how many stars it has it better have three <laughs> it's three stars <laughs> it is a most excellent representation of what it's supposed to be that's pretty okay. awesome <laughs> all right now how did a triangle slip in with all of these mythical magical creatures it's because the greeks couldn't see the southern hemisphere sky and it wasn't until the 1700s where abby louis nicholas lacai I think I have most of his names right. Um, he was a uh, he was a peripatetic. I think he was a monk actually, but he went to the southern hemisphere with the purpose, sole intent of mapping the rest of the sky. Oh wow! Look at that. Yeah, I know, I know. So he so for the for the folks in the west, because of course in Australia they've been there, done that millennia earlier. Okay, so so here he is, and. He's, this is like late 1700s or so. This is the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. And he says to myself, these other things are important to me, not the Greek and Roman gods. So he lays it out and he names a sextant. Oh, God. That is a, that that is a constellation called sextants. It's a, yes, an octant. Okay. Which preceded the sextant. Two navigational devices are down there. Right. He has Argo Novice, which is the the ship for, uh, I think it was Jason and the Argonauts. Okay. okay. But, so that's legend, of course. But he has but parts of the ship. He has a keel, a mast, a compass. This is a navigational compass. All of these are constellations. There is the two-star constellation, Telescopium. Okay. <laughs> We're stretching, buddy. But it's, it's, at point A, point A. Yeah, it's a telescope. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> Wait, did he have a one star constellation called Coal? <laughs> no. This is it's a constellation called The Dot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if you look in this, if you, uh, there's also a drafting table. Okay. It, yeah, it's called Picter, I think it is. It's, it's, it's someone at a drafting table. So the constellations are very different depending on what era people absorb them, name them, and put them in the books. So I'm just fascinated by that. I'm fascinated. That, no, that, that is fascinating because it shows you that there is indeed a, a psychological and cultural influence on observation. Yes, yes, yes. And what you think and what matters to you. To you. Yes. That's yes. pretty cool. Oh, by the way, Pegasus is a big square, a big empty square, and that's the body of the horse. But really, if you look at other stars in the area, and if I didn't know anything about flying horses, and I'm Amer- American, I'd say, damn, that looks like a baseball diamond. Nice. <laughs> there you go. So right. if, yeah, if America were around 2,000 years ago, and we had baseball, and right. we were in charge of naming the constellations, Constellation we would have baseball, baseball in the sky. Right. Completely. And Constellation Apple Pie and Constellation <laughs> Chevrolet. Chevy at the levee. And then we're good. Chevy at the levee. <laughs> Wait, so, Chuck, I have way more about Constellations to type. We're going to have to, like, spill this into another explainer. Cool. One All day, right. okay? Because I've only just begun. Well, this was fun. That's been an explainer on Constellations, part one. 
uh, come back for part two whenever we record that. I don't know. But it'll be there, I promise, <laughs> eventually. All right, Chuck, always good to have you. Always a pleasure. All right, Neil deGrasse Tyson, keep looking up. <laughs>